Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our first public session of Nozomi Hour. Uh, our regular updates, uh, latest updates in the industry, OT, IoT trends. And this is a new, a new format for us. And we started it uh, recently with the one-to-one -one, uh, private calls and meetings with our uh, key clients, uh, updating them on, on the events in the industry. And we decided to go, uh, to go public. And this is our first public session. So what do we do? Uh, during this public session, we cover the updates. Uh, well, I will show you the agenda. Uh, first of all, for uh, those who don't know me, uh, my name is Anton. I'm industrial cybersecurity specialist and uh, certified engineer uh, at Nozomi Networks. I have an experience more than 14 years uh, in industrial cybersecurity. I do lots of and contribute in many community uh projects on industrial cybersecurity big fan of this topic big fan of information sharing knowledge sharing community building so i'm happy to you know to host these initiatives and share some useful uh, and something new and interesting uh, for you today okay so what do we cover uh during our sessions we will cover uh the main and interesting innovative news uh, in the industry on threat landscape updates, incidents, vulnerabilities, attack techniques. Uh, or the second part is regulation and standards. And the third part is the technology trends, research tools, best practices. And we also will uh, highlight how we as an industrial cybersecurity uh, technology provider how we uh, how we uh, related to this to this uh, trends and after each after each section we will have time for uh, like we can have a break and we have a I, I can answer your questions I can read your comments so feel free to send them in the chat area so I, I will I will check on them Yes, and this time we cover. Uh, we are covering the period of uh, January and uh, February, the the beginning of the year. Uh, what happened during January, February? It was a short uh, period. It was it was a beginning of the year, so it was quiet. But anyway, there are some uh, interesting event uh, events happened. Let's get started. And started with threat landscape uh, updates. Uh, usually, I start with the OT vulnerability snapshots, the, those vulnerabilities that uh, have been published during this period. And you can see those vulnerabilities on the list, uh, uh, the vendor names, and they are ranked by the CVC, CV, CVSS uh, uh, severity score. But uh, you know to show you that uh, CVC, CVSS uh, severity score uh, is not enough for uh, vulnerability management for prioritization. Usually, I prioritize them uh, additional with some additional scoring system, like uh, presence of vulnerabilities in the known exploited vulnerability catalog by CISA and exploit prediction scoring system uh, score as well. This time, uh, none of the vulnerabilities uh, are uh, none of the vulnerabilities is in the catalog uh, by CISA, but uh, there are vendors with vulnerabilities uh, with EPSS score more than one percent, and I the, the, that consider that uh, I consider them as as a critical. The one percent might seem not very uh, not very high, not very critical level for vulnerabilities, but this is the uh, nature of EPSS scoring system, that more than 90%, almost 90% of vulnerabilities uh, has the uh, uh, EPSS score less than 1%. So exploit prediction scoring system, this is scoring system that uh, try to driven uh, in the data driven community scoring system that try to predict vulnerabilities uh, to be exploited. And um, yeah, it's a it's a data driven, and the the also it's risk based system. So there is uh, there are no uh, severity categories uh, like high, critical, medium, 
Uh, and uh, it's up to actually user to decide which level is critical. But there are uh, discussions uh, in the community that you know vulnerabilities with with EPSS uh, from one to to ten percent might be considered critical. So it depends on your efforts what what you want to spend on that. And this time to highlight the vulnerabilities uh, during this period, I made it a little bit lower to one percent. And this is uh, on this slide. You also can see those uh, products and the vulnerability numbers to 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 be able to address them. Uh, as always, I use the great resource, the community resource, uh, ICS Advisory Project. Uh, it's a good aggregation and visualization of vulnerability data. And during this um, during for this slide, I made this exercise on vulnerability prioritization. Uh, of course, it, it may be it, it, it may be seen as an example how to do that. But to be honest, it's not enough when you use the uh, when you do vulnerability management, vulnerability prioritization uh, in your environment. It's important to take into account additional factors like the criticality of the system, the level of exposure, the the number of vulnerable uh, assets, and so on. But the the part based on scoring you can use this one and uh, uh, for those who are a client for Nozomi uh, and their uh, their and uh, our sensors cover their uh, network segment with this product they for sure will see this uh, information on their uh, vulnerability section and they easily can use this logic and our uh, query and dashboard capabilities to build this uh, prioritization with our custom rules and our custom dashboards and so on. But this is what happened during these uh, two months, January and February. Moving on to the notable cyber physical incidents and notable uh, incidents in, in critical infrastructure and in industrial companies, uh, I would like to start with two happened the same country, in the same industry, in the same months, uh, February, Gen Germany in manufacturing. Uh, first of them was the attack to the battery manufacturer Warta Group. It was a target of cyber attacks uh, when the IT system and uh, our production also were proactively shut down for the security reasons and five production plants uh, were affected, uh, which paralyzed almost all their operations in five uh, um, five production sites, three in Germany, uh, as well as one in Romania and Indonesia. And it's known that at least uh, for two days uh, they were paralyzed, but uh, since then we don't have uh, updates. The second one in Germany was the attack on steel giant ThyssenKrupp, uh, they confirmed that uh, hackers breached their uh, automotive division um, company, automotive body solutions, forcing them to shut down IT systems. Uh, Sarland based uh, Sarland based plant was directly impacted by the attack. Uh, as a result, production was shut down, uh, but fortunately uh, supplies to customers uh, uh, was not uh, impacted. The next one happened in uh, notable happened in Lebanon in tran transportation industry in January in Beirut airport uh, there was an attack uh, to their critical systems such as flight information display systems and baggage handling system, which led to uh, significant significant operational disturbances. And the last one uh, it's not cyber it's not physical but also important the attack on Schneider Electric. Schneider Electric was hit by ransomware attack against its sustainability business division. The attack uh, directly impacted uh, its ecostructure resource advisory platform, which has used more than 2,000 uh, companies worldwide in the uh, for monitoring energy and resource data. The Cactus ransomware group um, claimed that roughly 1.5 terabytes of uh, data were exfiltrated. It's not the physical, but it's a, a, another example of supply chain uh, risk, supply chain attack, where the, the famous industrial automation vendors, which is used all over the world, uh, was attacked and might be used as an entry point for 
uh, for uh, other attacks to, to critical infrastructure, to industrial companies. And so for companies who are clients um, of Schneider Electric, probably they need to start asking questions from Schneider Electric. Uh, were there, was their data compromised uh, to, to, to understand the risk? Again, this is just the uh, headlines, the news uh, from media, as, as always. Um, and this content is uh, doesn't have uh, good actionable data, like indicator of compromises, techniques, attack techniques, and so on. Something that might be useful to, um, to predict this kind of, kind of attack uh, in, in your environment. But it's also good to know because, you know, know the companies, know the countries, know the industry uh, and potential impact that may be, uh, may happen. So it's also good, good kind of strategic uh, threat intelligence. Talking about the actionable data, the threat intel, the um, techniques and indicator of, outcome, of compromise, I want to highlight um, some good uh, write-ups, good threat reports. Uh, this time they're by uh, Mendiant and CISA with uh, details on, on the attacks. One of them from Mendiant is uh, the analysis of offensive cyber operations uh, in, in the war, uh, in the Israel-Hamas war with lots of details on destructive attacks hack and leaks operations, in information operations, uh, the phishing, the mobile spyware, uh, all the activities targeting Israel, Palestine, the Middle East country, US, European Union. So lots of, uh, lots of threat intelligence here. Uh, next one is uh, also by Mendiant uh, about the threat actor UNC 1549. Uh, it's a espionage activity targeting the airspace, aviation, defense industries in Middle East countries, including Israel, UAE, uh, Italy, oh, sorry, Turkey, India, Albania, um, evasion techniques, extensive use of Microsoft Azure Cloud Platform for hosting uh, C, command and control operations, social engineering, and so on. The next one, the big one, was uh, by CISA, the Vault Typhoon uh, APT group against critical infrastructure in the USA and surprisingly in the Africa. Uh, the, this uh, APT group compromised IT environments of critical infrastructures uh, such as communications, energy, water, uh, transportation, and the choice of targets and their behavior is not traditional for cyber espionage. That's why U.S. Uh, agent, uh, agencies uh, assessed that the actors are preparing to enable lateral movement to uh, OT assets to disrupt functions. Also, CISA published good updates on new ransomware uh, group activities such as Phobos ransomware, Alfie, Black Cat, uh, which one, for example, was noticed recently uh, on attack uh, to Colo um, Canadian pipeline. Uh, stealing data and, and so on. So good data, good actionable data for users of uh, uh, Nozomi networks, technologies uh, and threat intelligence services. We, we know this data, we analyze them uh, amongst other uh, public and private sources and this data is delivered to our platforms. So uh, if, there are, if there is any activities, any activity relevant to this, um, this activity, uh, the Nozomi network will notify uh, will notify their users. And moving on, uh, mentioning ransomware, I also wanted to highlight a good piece of kind of strategic threat intelligence, a good report on ransomware uh, activities uh, in the second half of the last year. Uh, they report by Global Resiliency Federation, uh, which is the uh, association of um, incident response search um, focusing uh, fo focusing on uh, focused on uh, critical infrastructure industrial companies. It's a good piece of uh, information. They they usually analyze the public public data uh, on uh, public incidents as well as com conversations on private uh, on dark um, dark web forums and so on. And during this period, they uh, they discovered like 
uh, to more than 2,000 successful attacks. Uh, the critical manufacturing was the most targeting industry sector uh, with more than 300 victims. Uh, probably this is actually the, is happening every time. Pre, uh, the, according to the report, the critical manufacturing is always number one. Uh, the majority of attacks were uh, committed by Lockbit version of ransomware with more than 400 uh, victims. And it's, it's also good to mention that recently during this period, there was a big news that uh, US um, FBI with their international partners uh, conducted the hacking hackback uh, operation against the Lockbit um, command and control server infrastructure. So we probably will not see this uh, ransomware group in the future for a while. What else? Uh, most of the attack, more, more than half happened in the US with the second uh, and third place for European Union in, in United Kingdom, and but also other countries as well. Good report, uh, lots of details on attack techniques used by ransomware groups, the uh, the amount of demand, uh, and so on. Highly recommended to to check it and to 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 check every every half year what's going on in the with the ransomware. And mentioning uh, reports, I also want to highlight that Nozomi uh, Networks published this time the their uh, report on OT IoT security uh, posture. Uh, for the second half of last year with lots of detail, details on the vulnerability landscape, attack statistics from OT environments, the IoT botnet landscape, and so on. And my 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 favorite part of the report is the top 10 uh, most critical types of uh, intrusion alerts. Um, this is basically the statistic we and telemetry we collect uh, from our sensors uh, deployed all over the world with, uh, across different industries. Uh, and we collect that in an, in an anonymous way. We aggregate them and show the statistics to uh, to public uh, audience. Uh, just they know what what what's the most frequent events happening in the industry in the in the in the industrial network. And you see on the screen there are uh, on top um, there are network scans, clear text passwords, the DDoS attempts. Uh, the brute force attempts and many, 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 many other activities. So it might be also used for prioritization, prioritization uh, of uh, security efforts on what, what should be detected, should be protected from first. And this is this is it for threat landscape updates. If you have any questions, comment, let me check the uh, the comments. Hey, Julian. Good to see you. No questions. Hi, everyone. Okay. So, uh, no questions. Moving on to the re regulation news. Again, it was uh, it was quiet period, a uh, couple of months, but there are a uh, good piece of news from uh, uh, from the US and European Union. The one, the first one, the big one is that NIST released their second version of cybersecurity framework. Uh, which is widely used and widely referenced cybersecurity framework for critical infrastructure security. It's a set of guidelines for mitigating organizational cybersecurity risk based on existing guidelines, practices, standards. And the new version is less of static resource and more of a set of resources guiding the implementation on the framework. Uh, like uh, quick start guides, the interactive tool, interactive tools, um, protection profiles and so on. And they also added new functions, which function which is called govern, the most significant change uh, uh, to the framework, uh, the goal to elevate all uh, risk management activities to the C-suite and board level of organizations. And update, they updated for inform, informative uh, informative uh, reference, um, references to existing standards, guidelines, framework. For example, they have a reference, uh, this mapping to uh, OT cybersecurity standards, such as IEC 62443 and others. And widely popular uh, standards globally, many, many um, asset owners use it for uh, their risk management strategies for their risk management activities as well as many uh, 
in the uh, cyber security uh, technology and service providers map their uh, capabilities to this framework. We also have that. And if, you, if you're interested how Nozomi Networks products uh, help and how they uh, comply with the framework, you can check the uh, links below. Moving on, the second, the next, the second one uh, regulation related uh, news is that European Union adopted and published their first cybersecurity certification scheme. Uh, European Union has their volunteer based uh, uh, cybersecurity certification scheme initiative, and this time they published the first one on common criteria certification. Uh, this, uh, this scheme targets ICT products such as hardware, software products, and components, and is based on widely used common criteria certification framework. Uh, Why well, it's interesting, again, it's not the final, um, it's not the final certification for a specific um, product category, but it's a, a framework for creating a protection profile for, for specific product. Uh, categories for any, for for example, for firewalls, for um, uh, operating systems, for key management system, PLCs, and so on. So, uh, one more benchmark for product selection and for uh, for choosing security products. And what else? Uh, it's the first one. There are also uh, other uh, certification scheme in progress. Uh, the next one is. In, in progress is the certification such security certification certification scheme for cloud services um, and certification scheme for 5G system security. And uh, they are uh, in the very beginning of uh, discussion of starting artificial intelligence certification scheme. Okay, one more certification is initiative in the world and there is a, uh, the first result of it. Moving on. And that's it with uh, the regulation. Let me check the questions. Okay. Uh, okay. We uh, I see the comments from Daniel. Daniel uh, says that all the listed attacks are related to IT zone, which had indirect impact on the operation zone. That's correct. That's that's uh, just a couple more example of, uh, example of. Uh, uh, colonial pipeline type operations when the you know the in interconnected in, in, in interconnectedness of uh, IT and OT when you know the, the industrial processes might be stopped even with the attack to IT. So it's not just uh, it's important not to focus only on cybersecurity of OT environment. It's important to understand that cybersecurity, uh, the cyber risk is a part of big enterprise. Uh, risk management strategy. So, and you know, attacking the IT systems, the uh, the operations also may be stopped. It might be, it might be affected. That's that's just a reminder. Okay, moving on to the no questions. Moving on to the third part: technology technology trends. Uh, during this um, section, usually I start with updates on the Zomi side, what we have new on our portfolio. Sometimes I, I remind some interesting th things, some um, some our functions, our capabilities. This time uh, we have a couple of updates. Uh, first of, of them, it was uh, quite big news in the industry in January, the Zomi network uh, launched the industry's first wireless security sensor, purpose built for OT and IoT uh, environments, which is called Nozomi Guardian Air. Just uh, additional um, additional tool, additional capability for our uh, clients, for our users to, um, to improve their visibility in the activities around their OT environment. Now they can see not only what's happening in the um, in the wired networks, but also all the wireless communications. And it provides capability of wireless set inventory, a wireless threat monitoring, and it might be useful for both type of uh, industrial users and asset owners, for those, uh, for those who use uh, the wireless network for their operations, who need to protect them, who need to control the uh, 
protect them from cyber attack. And for the second one, who, who don't use a wireless network, where they are prohibited and they want to protect their environment against wireless communications, for example, against the uh, unauthorized um, access point in their network, unauthorized uh, USB wireless uh, wireless um, adapters, and so on. So uh, it's value for visibility for both. And what we do, we monitor a wide range of uh, passively, of course, monitor the passively the uh, wide range of wireless communications, uh, um, starting from Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Zigbee, uh, to industrial wireless uh, communications like wireless hard ISA 100. As well, uh, we, we monitor the LoRaWAN cellular communications and drone presence and drone communications as well. So. Uh, we provide the triangulation for wireless, many, many, many different uh, attack uh, types for um, wireless communication can be detected. So extension, a uh, new tool with extended visibility uh, and protection across the wireless spectrum around OT network for our, uh, for our users. Uh, the second one, it's um, big, big news, uh, good news for uh, our Middle East clients, the Nizomi Vantage, our cloud platform, now have now has new uh, instance, the first instance in the Middle East region. Uh, we launched Vantage in the UAE, in Dubai. So all the capabilities uh, of our cloud platform, the connection of our Guardian uh, network sensor, Endpoint network sensor ARC and Guardian Air sensor might be uh, used in the Middle East as well, uh, as well as the our uh, artificial intelligence engine for correlating the telemetry, uh, the attack, to the alert telemetry, the vulnerability telemetry with the uh, almost unlimited uh, cloud uh, technical. Um, cloud resource capability. So now it's available in the Middle East as well. So we are getting closer uh, to, to this region. And that's it from uh, from the Zomi. And this time I haven't noticed um, new uh, good new community tools, but I wanted mentioning the um, the prioritization for vulnerabilities, the attack techniques in, in, uh, on, on the reports, the uh, ransomware uh, attacks, I decided to remind a good tool and in and, 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 and good uh, good process that, uh, you know, it's important to prioritize attack technique which you try to address. And one of the uh, good tools uh, on this topic is the uh, Mitra's uh, technique prioritization tool, which is called Top Attack Techniques by Mitra Center for Threat Informed uh, Defense. It's a methodology and interactive tool that help defender systematically prioritize, prioritize attack techniques. So uh, there is basically a calculator. You can go there. You can it's public. You can check, uh, click, uh, uh, click the buttons. Uh, choose what kind of visibility you have. What kind of data sources on attack you have. With some details on your uh, environment, such as rating system, and, and it will provide you the list of top uh, techniques to focus on. And uh, they, this data based on the uh, Mitre research and Mitre um, analysis of previous attacks in the previous years. And uh, yeah, there is always a methodology that can be used for your own prioritization. And they published as well the, uh, based on this methodology, ransomware top 10 list. Also, good piece of uh, intelligence to, uh, to make your pr protection against ransomware better. And well, in all, it's a good tool for defenders to focus on adversary behavior that are most relevant to their organization, to their infrastructure. And it is not the, the only uh, the only tool in the industry and the only source of the top uh, attack techniques. Uh, there are many vendors who provide their own reports with top techniques based on their visibility, based on their da data sources. But it's a good uh, uh, food for thought for prioritization. Prioritization is a key. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Pareto principle in, in life and in work and uh, everything that spend uh, your efforts, uh, spend your energy and resources uh, intelligently, 
you know try to uh, achieve 80 percent of results uh, with uh, first with eight it was 20 percent of your efforts yes and uh, for example um, for users of our nozomi networks it's easy to build dashboards talking about prioritization uh, and attack techniques it's easy to build uh, dashboards on uh, the top uh, attack techniques detected in in your network with our uh, with our sensor. So we usually we map the threat intelligence we deliver. We threat, uh, we map the uh, alerts that we detect with the attack technique. So we also provide these uh, capabilities to do your own prioritization based on what you see in your network. And that's it for today. Uh, we have time for discussion. Uh, let me check the comments and feel free. It's your time. Happy to happy to talk. Happy to answer. Okay, I see the question on. Um, uh, advantage instance in the UAE. Uh, uh, okay, a nice uh, walkthrough. And the advantage instance in the UAE means only the UAE customers. Now it's the uh, compliance with the depth of energy regulation. How is the compliance with it? Uh, well, for us, you know, we open for everyone. We open uh, our instance open for other companies in the region, but we know that in some countries there is a strict regulation on, uh, you know, the data sharing uh, across the board uh, border that's why maybe the problem for for the clients to to try to use it but if it's uh, it's open for them if it's not a problem they can easily use it but we also open for a uh, discussion on opening our data centers our vintage instances in other country uh, it's you know it's up to discussion with our sales repre representative in the country. So feel free to reach out to us with it, with this uh, question. If you think you need this in your country, let us know. We will uh, we will uh, discuss and consider it. Thank you. Uh, There is a question, are we able to recommend your product in Kais, uh, Saudi Arabia? Uh, well, uh, depends on which product you mean. I mean, you can recommend all of them, of course. Uh, we have clients in uh, uh, Saudi Arabia and, uh, you know, they're used in many industrial companies. If you, if you are mentioning the, um, the wireless product, uh, well, again, it depends on the, um, uh, on the situation is if it's possible to use the cloud for the company because uh, our uh, well, our wireless sensor is connected uh, directly to cloud. If it's uh, if it's um, appropriate for you, so you can easily use it in in, in your country. Um, there is a question on which cellular uh, bands and standards are covered by wireless sensor. I don't remember off the top of my head, but we definitely have it uh, on the website in the product uh, pro product section. Uh, I uh, put the link on this uh, on the um, on the materials uh, on the slide, and my presentation and the recording will be shared, and you can uh, easily to go and check there, or you can Google it right now. So that's that's the answer. What else do we have here? What's about multi-tenancy in Vantage for MSSP? We definitely have multi-tenancy uh, on Vantage for MSSP. Uh, this is, was one of the, our goals, uh, to work with MSSP. You can uh, easily uh, you know, come and, and check it. Uh, so get the demo version, check that we have it. Mm. Hi, Anton. Great presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. Good to see you, man. Would you please specify if Guardian Air had data diet capabilities? Ha. Huh. Uh, well, the the the, the uh, sensor itself, it's not that, that data diet. It's it doesn't have the data diet capabilities, but uh 
okay, what I can say in terms of uh, safety, it doesn't do any um, it doesn't do any active uh, operations in the wireless spectrum. It's only monitor, collect data, and send them to the cloud. So you can uh, easily to install data diet uh, between the cloud and uh, and wireless uh, sensor. So in, if you want to, you know, to make sure that it's one way direction. So for sure. Let's wait for a while for uh, maybe comments and uh, questions. Happy to see you guys too. This is was uh, this was our first session, public session. Um, maybe some of the users, uh, some of the uh, today's uh, uh, participants uh, see saw that in uh, our private calls. But we will continue that. Uh, we're going to do this is on a regular basis. Mobile every three months it probably will be a quarter basis and uh, yeah we'll uh, we'll keep the finger on the pulse and provide you the the, the best and the interesting the most inno innovative um, updates and insight from the industry if you have any feedback question what should we add uh feel free happy to happy to discuss Well, I see that uh, probably that's it. No new questions. It was great to see you all and see you all next time. Thank you very much. Take care, guys. Mm -hmm.